everyone, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite is a very interesting tablet that's gotten three different revisions now, the 2020, 2022, and the new 2024 model. So let me go and give you a quick breakdown on exactly how to use this particular tablet. It's a very good tablet for the price, I would say. So this is a quick breakdown. If you've never used a tablet before, even a Samsung one, you should have a decent understanding by the end of it. Now in the front of this particular tablet, you are getting a very decent sized display. It looks fairly good, there's a little bit of bezel around it, but it's not really that bad. We're getting a front facing camera on the front side of this particular tablet. On the top side of it, depending on how you look at it, you are also getting a power button at the very top and then two volume down, volume up buttons right here. You're getting a microphone hole and an SD card slot removal slot, which we'll talk about in a second. At the very top portion, you're getting a headphone jack and a speaker grill, which is right up there. On the other side, you're not really getting anything, it's just a completely flat side. The very bottom, you're getting a USB Type-C port. So very good stuff, you're getting the speaker grill, USB Type-C port, and then not really anything else super crazy going on. On the back side, you're getting a single camera setup, the Samsung logo right here, and then secured by AKG at the very, very bottom. So for the exterior of the tablet, it's pretty interesting. Now a very important thing that every tablet user may end up wanting to do on their particular tablet is to actually go through and essentially you know, remove the SD card. Now the SD card is a very important part of your particular tablet. I'm pretty sure every single person out there needs to go ahead and remove it every once in a while. So to remove it, what you're going to want to do is you want to make your way over to the top of your particular tablet. Now when you do that, you'll see this particular area come up. Now what you want to do now, you want to grab your SD card or SIM card removal tray. Now it kind of looks like this. What you can do is you can grab one of these and you can input it right inside of the hole inside of the SD card area. So you want to input that in just like so and this little area should go ahead and pop out. So now what you're going to want to do is you want to go and grab this tray out just like so. So you can just grab this thing like this and you should be able to see that on this side you should have your micro SD card slot right there. So all you're going to have to do is you can go ahead and just turn this thing on. You can go ahead and just you know put your SD card in as you normally would and that's it. You should be able to have your SD card just like so. And then what you want to do is you want to input that SD card back in just like you normally would. So you can input in just like this how it's supposed to normally go. Slide this bad boy back in and that's it. Your SD card should then be read on your particular tablet, and that's really all you're going to have to do as of that point. Now after this, you, when you want to go and actually turn on your tablet for the first time, what you want to do is you want to click the power button at the very front. This tablet also supports double tap to wake, so it doesn't support double tap to wake, but you can power it on by clicking the power button. Then you'll come into your normal lock screen. Now the lock screen is great because you do have your standard display, you know, everything looks fine here. Now you have your time here, your date and everything like that here as well. If you ever get notifications on your tablet, those things should come up here. In fact, if you tap here, you should be able to get some notifications that look something like this. At the very bottom left and right, you'll have you know customizable toggles. You can actually customize your lock screen by holding down on the lock screen like so. So you can hold down the lock screen like this, and you can customize it further by changing things around and everything. And I'd recommend kind of going through and kind of you know learning how to do this because it's a very cool thing. Whenever you're done, you can click done. If you want to get into the home screen of your tablet, you can swipe up. Now on your home screen, you'll see a couple of different things. You'll see your widgets and app icons and all this other stuff all across the board. Now if you want to, you can hold down on a widget like this and you can move it around and do whatever you want to with it. Now if you also want to, you can hold it down right here and you can kind of go ahead and remove it. So you can click here and remove a widget if you really want to. You can also hold down on a widget right here and you know make it bigger or smaller depending on what you want to do. You can move it around and you know delete things too. It totally depends on what you want to do. So that's a very cool thing. At the top you have your status bar, so it's your time and your date and like some other settings up here in the top right and left. So you have all sorts of other things all across the board here too, which you can kind of go and like kind of maneuver around with. Then at the very bottom here, you still have your app icons and you have different pages here, so your dock always stays consistent. But this page over here, you can move around these app icons and all sorts of stuff there. Now if you want to get into all your applications on your tablet, you can swipe up and this page will have all the applications that you have inside of your particular tablet, which is really cool. So you can open up an app, close an app, all sorts of stuff here. Now if you want to go ahead and get into an application, you can tap onto it just by tapping into here, and then you'll come into this page. Now if you want to go back home, what you want to do, as at the very bottom you have these type of gestures, or these navbar buttons, what you want to do is you want to click on the home button right there, which is the circle button, and that will always bring you back home. No matter what application you're in, if you just tap on that home button, you'll basically just always come back home, which is a really nice thing. Now if you want to, let's say you're inside of an application and you go inside of a particular panel. So let's say we go into our Google Messages panel and let's say we go and click on privacy and we want to go back into our previous page. 
you can click on the back button and it will take you back exactly where you were before. And if you want to go back again, it'll take you back home. Now, if you want to get into your split screen multitasking or your regular multitasking panel, that's what these three lines are for. So those three lines at the very bottom left right here on the top left portion right here, what you want to do is if you want to split screen multitask, you can make your way over into an application like this. And if you want to get into your multitasking panel, you can click on the three lines, which are right here. So you can tap on the three lines. This page will come up. What you want to do this you can close out of an application if you want to like this. But if you want to split screen multitask, which is really cool, you can click onto that eye icon that's above that particular icon right here, and you'll come to this page. Now, what you want to do is you want to click on open and split screen view, which is right there, and you'll get into this pop-up. So now what you can do is you can choose a different application on the right side and basically have a full-on app on one side and another app on the other side. Now, not every app can be open, but you can open up on most of them, and you'll see that you can basically just go ahead and kind of configure this whichever way you want to. You can make this bigger or smaller or delete an app completely on the side, and that's basically how it's done. You can also get back into multitasking and completely swipe out of these applications like this to go, to go back into your home screen. Now another thing is swiping down from the top left. When you do that, you'll get into your control center. You'll see your notifications and stuff. You can you know delete these notifications if you want to. You'll also see your quick tiles, some other things up here. If you swipe down one more time, you should be able to see these more quick toggles that actually come up. So now what you can do is you can modify your brightness. You can again edit these tiles and you can do all sorts of other things here too. Swiping back out of here, if we want to get into our settings application, we can tap into settings right here, and there's a lot of stuff here. There's your connections, your Bluetooth connections, there's your display settings, and one thing I like to do is just go and turn my, you know, either light mode or dark mode off. I turn off dark, uh, turn off automatic brightness, and I turn my screen time out temporarily for like 30 minutes or so, so these videos, you know, I don't have to click, you know, keep clicking on the display. Another thing I'd recommend doing is swiping all the way down from the top left and clicking on software update and literally just going through and downloading and installing the latest update available for your tablet. You don't want to be on like a very outdated version of your Android tablet, so I recommend just going through and actually just, you know, installing the latest version of software for your tablet. That's another very important thing I'd recommend doing as well. Now, screenshotting is another very big thing that I'm pretty sure a lot of people want to go ahead and do on their Samsung Galaxy Tab. So to screenshot on your Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, it's a very easy process. What you want to do? is you want to look at the very top of your particular tablet, and you should be able to see two buttons, the power button and the volume down button right here. In order to take a screenshot on your Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, what you want to do is you want to hold down on the power button, like click on it while you're clicking on, I don't know what this is about, while you're clicking the volume down button at the exact same time. And when you do that, you should see the screen actually take a little bit of a screenshot. So I didn't do it right. You want to click on them at the exact same time, and the screen will go in screenshot just like how I did, and this bottom bar will come up right here too. So if you want to, if you want to take screenshots, you just have to click on those buttons. So the power button and the volume down button at the exact same time, click them down, hold them down for like a second and let go, and then it'll go and take a screenshot. To view this screenshot, you want to open up your gallery application. This page will then come up and you'll see those screenshots right here. And you can go and delete the screenshot if you need to, or you can edit the screenshot. You can up, you know, share the screenshot out, but that's basically how you do it there. And that's another really cool thing that I'm pretty sure every single tab as six light person or an owner probably wants to go ahead and do. Now, in the same type of way, screen recording is another very important thing that I'm pretty sure every single tab as six light owner wants to do. So to go ahead and screenshot on your particular tab as six light to do this, what you're going to want to do again, it's very basic. You want to go and swipe down from the top left corner right up here and you'll get into this page. Now, what you're going to want to do then is you want to swipe down one more time and then this page is going to come up. Now what you're going to want to do here is you want to go and click on the screen recording button or the screen recorder button that shows up right here. What you want to do is you want to tap on screen recorder. This page is going to come up. Now it's going to tell you a few different things, but if you want to go ahead and basically screen record, you can either choose whether you want no sound coming from the screen recording, media and media and mic. Media is basically whatever is going on in your display it's going to record. Media and mic is essentially, it's going to record all your sounds and you know from your display and including me talking. So you can kind of choose whatever you want to. Whenever you're ready, you can click start recording. It's going to count down from three. And at this point, you can go and just start using your tablet as you normally would. You can screen record or whatever you wanted to screen record. And that's really it. Whenever you're done, on the top right, you want to go and click on the stop button, which is right there. You can also pause it and kind of do some other things here and there too with that particular panel. And that's it. If you want to view the screen recording, you can go and make your way over to your gallery application, which is right up here. And then you'll come back into this page. And then if you go and tap into here, you'll basically see this type of page that comes up and you'll see the screen recording 
And just like with screenshots and other images in gallery, you can share the screenshot out, you know, or screen the recording out, you can edit the screen recording here, lots of other cool stuff you can do within this panel. Finally, if you ever need to power on or off your tablet, you can always do so by just clicking on the power button up at the very top to power it on or power it off. But if you want to completely shut down your particular Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, what you're going to want to do is you want to hold down both the power button and the volume down button at the exact same time. So just hold them down until you get a panel on your display that shows you that it's turning off. So you can hold down the buttons at the same time. It's kind of hard because of the way this tablet's kind of set up. But what you can do again is go ahead and hold down these two buttons. So just hold down these two buttons until this display comes up. And here you can either power off your tablet completely or you can restart your tablet. But if you don't want to go and use the buttons, you can also just swipe down from the top left and swipe down one more time. And you'll see this type of power button right there. And all you're going to want to do here is click on that power button and you'll get into the exact same panel. So you can either use the power buttons if your display is not working, or you can just go ahead and use it this way. So those are like two different ways to go and do it. So ultimately, that's a pretty quick introduction on how to use your Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. As I mentioned, this particular tablet, there's lots and lots of things to do here. It's a learning process definitely to use it, but I would recommend putting a screen protector in a case on your particular tablet as well, because that will also probably end up fixing, you know, or that'll also end up, you know, allowing you to kind of get used to using this tablet. So that pretty much covers it up here. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.